Back in 2011, Nintendo released the Nintendo 3DS, a follow-up to the widely sold Nintendo DS. While the Nintendo DS widely outsold its contemporary, the PlayStation Portable or PSP worldwide, in the Philippines, the PSP was king. The Nintendo DS was widely viewed as the console for kids. The PlayStation brand built its Philippine audience starting from the PS1 to the PS2 and then the PSP. When the PlayStation Vita was announced, anticipation among Filipino gamers were high, including myself. But then, as time went by, the Nintendo 3DS became a more appealing option to me, so I bought it first. And soon, it was apparent that the 3DS became the more preferred handheld of Filipino gamers over the Vita. Why did the 3DS get so much popular over the PlayStation Vita? We'll try to explore it on this video. Hi, I'm Zach and this is GG Fistbump. In one of my previous videos, I discussed why the PSP is more popular than the Nintendo DS in the Philippines. But during the release of its follow-up, the PlayStation Vita, it didn't quite live up to expectations despite the strong following of the PlayStation brand. And it probably flopped like in the rest of the world. Even though this generation of handles face stiff competition from mobile gaming, particularly those from Android or iOS-based devices which came a long way from the previous Symbian-based games, the Nintendo 3DS still managed to become successful despite being a dedicated gaming device. What contributed to the popularity of the Nintendo 3DS in the Philippines? Now before we move on, it would really help if you would click on subscribe then hit on that notification bell to stay up to date with my latest videos. The Nintendo 3DS was first announced in March 2010 and was officially unveiled in E3 2010 on June 15. Its main highlight was that the 3DS offered glasses-free 3D, back when 3D was a thing, with 3D movie theaters and 3D televisions coming out. Take note that this isn't really Nintendo's first foray into 3D gaming. We had the largely forgotten Virtual Boy. Heck. I didn't even know that there was a Virtual Boy when I was a kid because I haven't seen anyone owning one. The 3DS eventually released in Japan on February 26, 2011 and worldwide the following month with a launch price of $249. Unfortunately, it was a bumpy start for Nintendo. Sales wasn't picking up. Quality titles were still lacking. To solve this, Nintendo took a gamble and slashed the price to $169 just 6 months after launch. And this strategy became a major success. The 3DS went on to become one of Nintendo's most successfully sold handhelds during the first 2 years of release. For me, the price of the 3DS definitely caught my attention. By the time I bought my 3DS back in December 2011, which wasn't even a year after its launch, a second-hand unit already cost less than 7,000 pesos or around $140. At that price point, I thought that it was already worth it getting a new handheld even though there weren't a lot of interesting titles for me yet. Thanks to its backwards compatibility, I got to play DS games like Ace Attorney right after playing The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. Slowly, 3DS games began building up. On the other hand, the PS Vita launched at $250. Like the 3DS, the PS Vita's quality titles were slow to release. However, the Vita maintained its price for 2 years before it finally lowered it. And once it did, it was a bit too late. The Vita also used new game cards instead of something like a UMD meaning your past PSP games can't be played on the new system. Add up expensive proprietary memory cards that can only be played exclusively for the system and the Vita seemed like an expensive piece of hardware. One nifty feature of the 3DS is Street Pass. 
What it essentially does is that when you are in close proximity with someone with a 3DS on sleep mode, you can get to exchange data with the other person, which can help you on specific games like the ones on the Street Pass Me Plaza. In my favorite Mii Plaza game, Street Pass Quest, the Mii of the 3DS owner you encountered will appear as a character in your game that can aid you on your quest. These games awards you with hats that your Mii can wear for your next Street Pass encounter. Repeatedly encounter the 3DS of other people and their Mii's would level up and grow stronger. This led the way to organize Street Pass events which also became a venue to play multiplayer games like Kid Icarus, Mario Kart 7, Pokemon, and Monster Hunter. Pinoy 3DS Street Pass Philippines was one of the first and more prominent groups, which met weekly in Gateway and eventually in Alimon. When the group became too big, it led to several small groups in different locations like Techno Friends in Techno Hub, Street Pass Trinova, Street Pass Mega Mall, Pinoy 3DS Davao, Street Pass Makati Auxilium Hunting Grounds, Manny and Friends in the Marikina Kainta area, and many more. The big number of people coming together in these Street Pass events was a clear indication that the 3DS was the more fun handheld to own than the Vita. Of course, the games for the 3DS were such hits over the Vita. You had the ever popular Monster Hunter, which transferred from the PSP to the 3DS. There's the new generation Pokemon X and Y, which receive a lot of buzz given that it was a major upgrade in graphics in the main series. A full Smash Brothers game was finally available in handheld devices. There's also Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing, Kingdom Hearts, Fire Emblem, Bravely Default, and so much more. Meanwhile, the Vita only had a few AAA titles. Most of what came out were indie games. There were a lot of PSP hits just like the aforementioned Monster Hunter which didn't come out on the Vita. Now I'll also touch on game piracy as it also brought in a lot of players to the 3DS. The 3DS was the first to be hacked compared to the PS Vita. Initially to run game backups, you need to have flashcards such as the Gateway 3DS and the Sky 3DS. Back then, 3DSs with system firmware 4.5 and below were selling like hotcakes because these units can play backup 3DS games. Even though Nintendo consistently released stability updates, hackers were smart enough to create Eminent, a partition where you can update the system to latest firmware, so that online play was still possible despite having a hacked console. Soon, with the release of RX Tools, Rayman, ARM9 and Bootstrap, all you needed were standard micro SD cards in order to store games. People who offered custom firmware services like myself suddenly had several customers during this time, and we earned a lot from this. The Vita, on the other hand, was a bit more complicated, and there was still the problem of the proprietary memory cards, so more people opted for the 3DS. The Vita, I think, ultimately flopped this time in the Philippines despite its strong PlayStation following. Sony failed to provide enough support to it compared to the PSP. The 3DS remained quite popular and interactive thanks to Street Pass events and to the AAA multiplayer and single player games until the release of the Nintendo Switch in 2017. And while the Nintendo Switch is already gaining in popularity, Nintendo still produces the 3DS up to today in December 2019, even though it was released first to the Vita, which is already discontinued. I really enjoyed my time with the 3DS. I think I spent more time playing with it than my Wii U or my PS4. While it is almost at the end of its life cycle, with the Nintendo Switch Lite seemingly poised to take its place, the 3DS has already made its mark to the Filipino gamers who experience it. And with that, I think we're done. If you found this video interesting or entertaining, please like and subscribe to my channel, then hit on that notification bell for more content just like this. Again, I'm Zach, and this is GG Fistbump.